Buffalo? Maybe how excited are you going on a, on a Monday night? Uh, I'm excited uh, just to go back out there and get a second shot at it. You know, this game last year was the game, you know, I got injured um, on a Monday night, you know, as ironic as that is. So I'm just excited to be able to get back out there and, um, you know, get another shot at it. Make it even more special for you just to kind of show you how far you've come in that time? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I feel good. I'm, I'm confident. I'm just, I'm just ready to go out there and cut it loose and play and, um, you know, uh, make plays, help us win, get this win, come back to Nashville. Last week you only got like 15 or 16 defensive <clears throat> snaps. Are you, is it just kind of a week to week thing in terms of what your role is on this team right now? Oh, yeah. You know, I just do whatever they ask me to do to the best of my ability. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I feel like if I take care of that, you know, I try to earn a bigger role and uh, uh, everything should take care of itself. I'm I, I'm definitely motivated. I'm I'm ready to show it. You know, Monday I'm ready to you know have a good game and uh, go out there to compete. How big a challenge with your receivers, a tight end, a quarterback you can extend plays? What, what, what kind of challenge? Is this? I mean, it's it's a tremendous challenge. You know, um, I don't really think um, what I, I think they. Went nine for 10 on third downs um, last week. So, you know, they're at the top of their game right now. So that's a great opportunity for us to go out there and, uh, you know, prove that we can also play, you know, the elite. So that's just what we're doing. We're going to go in there and compete. Uh, yeah, like you said, we got a plaster, play through the whistle, um, be ready for third and fourth down territory. Um, not only can he throw the ball accurately, but you know he, he's um, very, very good with his legs. He always looks to run to pick up first down. So it's, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a dog fight. When you see that synergy that a quarterback and receiver like Allen and Diggs have, how much does that stand out to the way they're always on the same page? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it just shows how much work they put in together, how much chemistry they got, and uh, you know, it just holds us to a high, high standard to make sure we're on the top of our game and we go execute. Are extremely talented. Obviously, Vaughn's a first ballot Hall of Fame type of guy. He's got a, you know, I don't even know how old he is. He might be 36. He might be 40 for all I know. But he's a, uh, he's still got a lot of juice. So we got our hands cut out, for, or our hands full. That's the word I'm looking for. You guys go into this game at all like backs against the wall and can't afford to go on too? Is it it's, too early for that? I think it's, it's too, it's never, the, that's never the case. Like it's, we're going to play football, and so we have to do better than we did last week and um, continue to take steps in the right direction. We did a lot of good stuff last Sunday. Just unfortunately, the scoreboard didn't reflect that. I know, shockingly, you're a vocal guy. When you guys go flat like you did at the beginning of the mm -hmm. second half, what do you do to, to try to help? I just, you know, verbally try to help the boys uh, get into it and tell them, you know, the, from an offensive line standpoint, you got to assume it's on you. You know, you got to take responsibility for that and, and try to keep everybody involved. But we have a good group of guys here that, that stay locked in the game. There's not a whole lot you have to say to them. You know, trust our coaches putting us in the spots and uh, play together. Obviously, it's only week two, but do you guys go into this game at all saying, you know, our back's against the wall, we can't afford to go into anything like that? I mean, that's the NFL every week, right? I mean, if you don't have that mentality, something's wrong. I mean, I've been on teams where we haven't won live, been on teams where we won a ton. So, I mean, if you don't have that sense of urgency, regardless of the record, you're going to have a problem. Todd made it sound like you were kind of unlucky that some plays that you were primary in and it came apart because of penalty. Imagine you've had games like that in the past. Yeah, it's football. I mean, you know, it's just just how the dice rolls sometimes, you know. So, I mean, just a function of how it played out. I mean, it's not a function of, you know, being ignored by, you know, anything else. It's just, you know, it's football. Sometimes you get a bunch of licks. Sometimes you got to be a great teammate and help other people get open. That's the beauty of this game. It's a team sport. Austin, how much do you love these uh, yeah, they're fun. They're fun. You get an opportunity to go out there uh, together as a team and go out there and compete. We're playing a really good football team, so in a great atmosphere I've never played in before, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So you never played Buffalo? No. The only time we played them uh, was in Atlanta. Yeah. So. you heard anything about the Bills Mafia over there? Uh, they like to break tables, it looks like. Uh, I, don't, I hear they're really passionate fans. It's awesome for them. Uh, just looking forward to go, go up there and compete. Looking out the bus window? Yeah, I might sneak a peek. We'll see how much time we're on the bus. We'll see. Going in, birds in and out, et cetera. Is that something that you manage, or, or how do you guys go about facilitating that? Uh, it's really just a part of the game planning that we do. 
um, trying to keep these guys fresh and, and uh, give everybody up an opportunity to contribute. So you do match the personnel in and out to play calls, et cetera? Uh, for the most part, I mean, but sometimes, you know, injuries dictate that. There's a lot of different things that can come into play, but, uh, you know, we try to do the best we can to, to, to in the rotation. If those guys are up, you know, we need them to contribute. When it comes to receivers being able to draw pass interference calls or defensive holdings like Cooper and Phillips did uh, in, the, in that game Sunday against the Giants, is there an art form to that? Do, do, are some guys better at getting the calls than others in terms of how they how they go about it? Uh, I mean, you, you hope that they just the, the officials call what they see at the end of the day. But you know, I, I think you know uh, circumspectively. We don't teach these guys to to expect to get the call. You know, we, we teach them to play through contact and make contested catches, all those things, so that that so that the game is never uh, put in their hands. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, along those lines, though, some are some do some guys kind of develop a knack? They're just harder to cover, and they sometimes get a you know draw a flag, whereas maybe another guy won't. You mean like flopping in the NBA or yeah. that, that type of? Uh, you know, <laughs> is there I, any I, acting going on? I mean, I I, I guess that you know I, if there is an art form of that, I certainly didn't perfect that and don't really know how to teach that. But I'm quite sure there are some guys that do that for sure. Last time we talked to you, you mentioned consistency being what you wanted to see out of Traylon just mm -hmm. in the preseason performance. Now you've gotten some regular season action out of him, and mm -hmm. he created a lot of separation, good analytics data on him. How'd you feel about that consistency level in his play? He's he's a work in progress, and he just has to continue to stack the days together, and uh, and I think he'll continue to get better from week to week, and that that's always the goal um, from an individual standpoint as a team is to consistently get better week to week, and I think he's he's on pace to do that. Do you feel him starting to kind of settle in and get at least like talking to us? He seems mm -hmm. more comfortable. Do you feel right. him? Settling in? Oh, without question. You know, I think he's starting to kind of grow up in the NFL a little bit and understand how to how to how to manage it and, and how to work through it and, and, and how to perform. We always say around here, you take advantage of those opportunities. Probably going to be some more to come. So keep building, keep growing, and uh, we'll help this football team. When you go against a guy like Josh Allen, who can make plays off schedule and likes to roll out and get outside the pocket. How important is it that your, your, your guys kind of set the edge, not only rush, but they got to set the edge and make sure that he doesn't make a big play? Yeah, he's a heck of a player. You know, not only does he attack you with his arm, he can attack you with his feet. And we talk to our guys all the time about just know who you're hunting. And, um, you know, we don't want to slow ourselves down. We just have to have awareness in terms of that. So I think they're locked in. They're excited for the challenge. And uh, we'll go out there on Monday night. Back to Weaver, the, the sacks are obvious. What, what what sort of smaller things did you see that, that you liked that you know that maybe you've been working with him on that showed up in the game? Yeah, his his attack was uh, was good, and that's that's one thing that we've been working on. And part of that is just pad level. You know, he comes off, and he's uh, we always talk about this. He's naturally high. He's a tall guy, and so just the attack and the pad level was something that he's been conscious of, something he worked on, and something that showed up in the game. So just continue to improve that, and uh, like I said, he'll help us win some games here. What's the emotional balance, I guess, when a guy like Anini gets his opportunity that? You're going to miss him because he probably could have helped you at some point versus you're happy for him for getting an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely happy for him. Uh, it's not every day you get called up to to play, and um, whether it's here, somewhere else, you know, those guys, that's when those guys get those opportunities to take advantage of him. So he grew when he was here, and I, I had a conversation with him, told him I was proud of him, and don't stop growing and take advantage of every opportunity. So. Obviously, it's only yeah, been I was, one game. I was proud so how do you feel your group kind of collect um, come together to make up for the loss in Maryland? Yeah, and like, listen, I love Harold to death and wish him nothing but best on the recovery. But, you know, we don't talk about making up for people or trying to fill voids. We work with what we got and um, proud of those guys and excited to see them continue to come together and grow. Let's go up and, you know, you're on high alert um, and uh, somebody who's that good does that to you. People talk about five guys playing as one on an offensive line, but. How important is the offensive line, especially the tackle relationship to the tight ends as an extension of the line? Yeah, I think it's very important, especially because I, I, I believe Todd does a great job in terms of even in protection, giving chip help and bang help. And we have to um, trust that the tight ends will be there when they're supposed to. But we run to the tight end a lot, too. Some, some, um, that's a big part of what we do. So those combinations are really important. 
the holding do, do, penalties against Brewer didn't seem terribly egregious the other day. Is that is that re, a, a thing that requires a correction, or do you trust maybe it won't get called by other crews? Or I think you know I think they were pretty tic tacky, but you know there's an opportunity there where his hands a little bit high. We can replace it quicker. Um, his his takedown on the linebacker, you know. I see what the refs see on that. Anytime you take a guy down and his shoulders turn and it looks like he's getting corkscrewed as he goes to the ground, they consider that a torque. So I know what the back judge at least saw on that. Like, don't change the aggression, Brew. Just keep going straight and, and pushing a guy instead of pushing with one and pulling another. But those ones were pretty tough. And you, uh, Mike Brewer made that comment the other day about maybe some meat on the bone as far as the running game is concerned. Yeah. How do, from, from your standpoint, how do you? No, I agree. I think that at the end of the day, for the most part, we covered them up, but we didn't necessarily um, – we take a lot of pride in running the football. And what I mean by that is we know we have a great back end, Derek, but we want to get them through the first level clean. I think we covered guys up and give a lot of credit to the Giants. You know, we covered them up, but we didn't necessarily win a gap and, and get them on a, only in probably one or two runs. We got them through there clean to get them into the second level to let him do what he does. But – I don't think it was all terrible either. We covered them up. We pushed some piles, and, and um, we got some stuff moving. It just, you know, it just felt like we never quite got to that point where we break one, yeah. which is obviously you always want to try and get at least one of those a game.